Welcome to the FOIA development video for August 22nd, 2014. We've been trying to wrap things up for the 1.0 release, so most of our work has pertained to bug and crash fixes. However, we've still had time to work on a few new features that I'd like to highlight. We now support building FOIA with SDL2. Because of this, we can take advantage of some input and video related bug fixes that happened during SDL2's development. We've now locked the engine at 60 frames per second instead of the old 30 frames per second. In the process, we changed all game data to use milliseconds instead of frames for timing. Now we can change where we lock the engine frame rate by changing a single variable. Unfortunately, people watching this video on YouTube won't be able to see the upcoming clips at 60 frames per second. I might try to upload the original video file somewhere else so that it can be viewed properly. Moving on, we've removed the game command line flag. Now mods can specify which game they belong to. For example, the Fantasy Core and Alpha Demo mods belong to a game called Flare Game. It is now possible to remap joystick buttons from the configuration menu. In an effort to make the game world feel more alive, we've made so that enemies will wander around their spawn area when not in combat. We try to improve how game saving works. First, whenever the game is saved, a log message is displayed to notify the player. Secondly, we now support saving through map and NPC events. In fact, we can now turn off autosaving completely and have all saving done through specific save points. This is something I feel should have been in the engine earlier, but we now have a developer console. To use it, enable developer mode in the configuration menu and press F5 in game. As of now, it can be used to give the player items, gold, and experience points, change campaign statuses, teleport within and between maps, and spawn enemies. As you may have noticed in the last clip, a radical was drawn on the ground when attacking. That was part of a set of improvements related to targeting. We also improved how melee attacks work. Before, melee targeting was a static offset, which only made sense for attacking human-sized enemies. Now, clicking anywhere on the enemy will automatically target their hitbox when using melee attacks. Finally, we've made some improvements to logging error messages. For SDL2 builds, we use SDL's own logging functions for better cross-platform support. In addition, we now print the file name and line number whenever there is an error with file parsing. This would be very helpful in tracking down bugs related to game data. Before I end this video, I'd like to take a moment to talk about what's in the future for Flutter. Moving to STL2 opened up the possibility of doing an Android port. Work has already begun on it, and what's been shown so far looks promising. There's a lot to consider when moving Flare to a mobile platform, besides just getting it to compile. The way user input works is a tough problem for a game that was originally designed for PCs. Hopefully, we'll be able to figure everything out. Also up and coming is Lua scripting support. Development and discussion of a scripting engine has been happening on the Flare Engine Next Issue Tracker. What's been shown so far blows my previous attempts at attempting Lua scripting out of the water. Still, there is much to be done, so we won't see scripting support until after 1.0. Flare is free software, so if you want to play it, create a new mod, or help contribute to development, you can do so using the links in the description. Thanks for watching.